So in a cyclic redundancy check, uh, we want to do the same kind of job as a checksum, but we would like it to be more resilient uh, to various kinds of errors. So uh, the simple checksum is still prone to uh, you know, the same bit in, in multiple words uh, being flipped, uh, and it, it won't notice that. So in a CRC, we would like to be able to uh, detect those kinds of events as well. Um, in effect, you can kind of think about it as having a very simple pseudo random number generator uh, to which you feed in the, um, uh, the bytes uh, to permute it over time and see if you get the same result at the end. Um, so uh, you know, the overall goal is to have the most efficient check that we can, much more efficient than a checksum in terms of the protection it provides, but still reducing the number of bits required to achieve that uh, protection. Um, so we can describe a polynomial um, that corresponds to a given bit string. So if we have, uh, so we have x to the power of zero to the power of one to the power of two to the power of three to the power of four to the power of five, um, because each time we move left in a um, a bit in a bit stream, we're increasing the power by one uh, in base two, and so then we can say that this stream. Our bit stream is equal to one times x to the power of five because there's the one there, uh, one times x to the power of four because there's the one there, zero times x to the power of three because there's a zero, zero times x to the power of two because there's a zero, zero times x to the power of one because there's a zero there, and finally uh, plus one times x to the zero um, uh, there because there's a one. We can of course simplify that by taking out all the zero terms. And so we can say that this is x to the five plus x to the four plus one. And we say its degree is five because the highest power involved is five. So this means that a k-bit frame has a maximum degree of k minus one um, because it's the highest numbered bit uh, that there will be. So now let's try and uh, think about uh, having a message polynomial, which we call mx, um, and the generator polynomial cx. So we want to have the message polynomial divided by the generator polynomial leave a remainder of zero. This is the test that it will be satisfied. Um, so uh, we can send mx and we can receive um, m-x uh, by reading the, uh, the data. Um, and sorry, so m-x is what we receive, which is the uh, the M that we have there and E, which is the error. Uh, and so we can actually have a look at that. We can compute uh, M-X divided by CX. And if the remainder is non-zero, then an error has occurred. So in other words, if an error has occurred, it's going to um, perturb the calculation uh, of MX that we do at the receive end. Uh, in And thus M-X won't be equal to MX because there'll be the error. Uh, and we can detect that in a, a quite efficient manner. So the sender and the receiver um, both need to know CX in order to be able to do this computation at both ends. So the, as we've already hinted at, the polynomial arithmetic is usually done modulo two uh, because that corresponds to binary. Uh, and so this gives us a number of advantages in designing these polynomials. Uh, so we can have a polynomial BX can be divided uh, by a polynomial CX, so long as BX has a higher degree than CX. Uh, and if BX and CX are at the same degree, then BX can be divided exactly once uh, by CX. Uh, and the remainder that we get uh, when we divide BX by CX, we can obtain actually by subtracting CX from BX. And to perform the subtraction operation, we can actually just do an exclusive OR operation on each pair of matching coefficients. So in other words, this is an extremely computationally efficient method that only requires exclusive OR and shifting in order to calculate uh, these cyclic redundancy codes, even though they're uh, you know, reasonably involved polynomials. So, um, if mx is the frame uh, that has m bits in it, and the generator polynomial has less than m bits, so some number r, um, so r is the degree of the um, of cx, which is uh, 
what we're going to use to test it. If we append that number of zero bits to uh, the low order end of the frame, so we will then have uh, M plus R bits, and this will be the polynomial um, X to the power of R multiplied by MX. Because we've shifted the, uh, the data frame left R bits. Uh, so we multiply the, um, uh, the MX by uh, two to the power of that number of bits. So now what we want to do is to divide uh, that by the bit string corresponding to uh, CX using the modulo two division. So again, we've explained how we can do that using uh, subtraction. Um, and that will get us then uh, the mental blank happening here. Sorry about that. Um, so that will get us the, uh, the remaining information that we need uh, to send the checksum frame. Um, and give us the uh, the m-x uh, polynomial uh, to be sent, which is of, of course the um, uh, the frame plus the uh, the error the, the CRC uh, code in there. So if we have uh, the message and the generator and we divide and we keep doing the division uh, through repeated subtraction, that will give us the remainder. The remainder is the check uh, that we want to have in there. So if we send the, um, uh, the message with the, uh, the error correction code, the EX uh, on the end, and we receive that, at, whoops, we, uh, we receive that at the other end. For every one in the EX means that the corresponding uh, position uh, in PX of the message has been flipped. But of course this has been done through modulo two, so uh, it's all uh, compacted over the um, uh, the entire length of the message. So the main thing that we have to watch out for is that um, EX over uh, CX, if they have, uh, if CX is a factor of EX, then it's possible for errors uh, to not be uh, correctly detected. So another way of expressing all of that really is to say that if you only have some small number of bits in the um, uh, in the error check whatever the nature of it is you can't actually detect every possible error uh, that can happen in that larger thing it's a bit like you can't compress a large block of data to a smaller block of data for all large blocks of data because effectively what you're trying to do that the the checksum or the, the check code is there to verify the integrity of the large slab of bits, but there are fewer check codes than there are slabs of bits. Uh, and so uh, depending on the particular properties of the, um, uh, the error correction or error detection code rather, uh, will depend on exactly which uh, you know, subsection of those errors that you can pick up versus those that you can't pick up. So um, now what we can do is that we can kind of still, you know, despite the fact that we can't pick up the vast majority of errors, we can actually uh, usually fairly easily with a well-designed uh, error check code, uh, be, you know, prove that any single bit error can be picked up. Uh, and that's almost always a, a bare requirement that if a uh, error correction, sorry, error detection code can't pick up all single bit errors, then generally it's not fit for purpose uh, and that there's usually a better one that can. Um, and you can also then usually uh, identify um, most double bit errors so long as uh, the factorization of the generator polynomial uh, doesn't correspond in a, a pathological way that enables that to be masked. Um, and you can generally pick up most odd numbers of errors because then the, because we, we're using XOR uh, in the arithmetic, an odd number of errors um, should uh, still result in a, a change. And again, we're talking fairly intuitively here rather than the, 
the, the formal mathematics of it. Uh, and likewise, generally any long burst of errors uh, will tend to get picked up uh, so long as the uh, you know, it's below some upper limit. And even then, typically long burst errors will still cause the, uh, the cyclic check code uh, to change. Um, and CLCs tend to be used because of their efficiency to still get these properties. So you could, for example, use uh, a cryptographic um, hash algorithm, right? You could use SHA-256, for example, to calculate the cryptographic hash uh, of the, uh, the frames that you're sending and then verify that, but it would be more computationally expensive to check. So this is why these uh, tend to be taken. Um, so there are six of these generator polynomials that have become very common now. Uh, so, the, for example, on Ethernet, uh, CRC32 uses the polynomial that's uh, shown down here. Uh, and essentially, any time that you need to use these, there's source code available. Uh, you can get the exact specifications uh, and reference implementations and make sure that you're, you're implementing one that behaves correctly for all input value uh, by having equivalency of the... Um, uh, the implementation. Cool. And we'll look at that.